Hi, and welcome to Best in Tesla News Episode 203, the last news episode of 2023. Yes, the year is ending and Tesla is heading for new records. And the EPA has released its 2023 Automotive Trend Report, where Tesla is so much ahead they get their own little box. And Gordon Johnson is out hating hard on Tesla again. And we're also going to take a look back at the incredible year of 2023 for Tesla and all the amazing stuff they achieved. And a new company is making magnesium out of seawater. And Morgan Stanley is out saying that Tesla's Optimus could disrupt the global labor market. And the Cybertruck does have a huge demand problem. And the Tesla Model Y, the best-selling car of 2023, is just about to become even better. All of this and much, much, much more in today's episode. So let's dive right in. We are heading into a new year, and that means that we can take a little look back and see how Tesla did, and of course, we are seeing records all around. We are heading into a new year, and that means we very shortly will get the deliveries and production numbers from Tesla, and of course, all the other guys. But be ready for mainstream media to get creative with the headlines, because Tesla will no doubt have a record-breaking Q4, breaking all previous quarters, and of course, we will have a record-breaking year of 2023, with Tesla up about 40% from 2022. So this is all, of course, very positive for Tesla, as we are living in a very high interest rate time in a very shaky economy, but Tesla, that only have premium cars at the moment, has not only grown 40% year over year, but will probably also have the best selling car on the planet in 2023, beating out all the more affordable favorites from legacy automakers. And Tesla will probably be as big, if not bigger, in unit sales than Audi beating one of the biggest auto brands in the world. All just so impressive. But you can bet mainstream media will try to find a way to make this look bad for Tesla. But even some media reporters are starting to get it, as we heard here on CNBC. People want a Tesla, maybe they don't want an EV. They want a Tesla, as you Who said, about. well, say, who, as, as, who as, said as, that? As, as the great Brian saw. Who, well, yeah. listen, I talk, it's funny, I actually talked to a car, I met a car dealer, he watches the show, he came up to me, we said he owns a bunch of brands, and we started talking, and, uh, you know, and basically he was like, yeah, I'm not selling them. I think people want Teslas, they don't want EVs, because Tesla, if you've driven them all, and I have, Tesla's a, just a different experience. The dashboard looks different. The infotainment system is very different. There's just it's just a different thing no doubt. than a than an electric powered Audi. Well and you're seeing Detroit peel back. You're seeing some of the European players. And that's why this was a poker move for the ages by Musk in terms of cutting prices, going after volumes. Now they're in a position of strength. And I believe this is just the next phase of the Tesla growth story, where I don't think they stop at a trillion. I think there's just the wow. middle innings. Yes, as I said many times now, Tesla does not see a demand slowdown as Ford and GM and Volkswagen is talking about. It is the old guys that have demand issues with their EVs, while Tesla sells more cars than ever before, even in China, where we have heard about the demand problem pretty much throughout all of 2023. But as you can see here on this chart from Roland, every single quarter has been a record for Tesla. And combined, Tesla should reach over 600 100,000 units sold in China domestically. And here in Europe, there is no catching the Tesla Model Y, not even close. In the EV race, Tesla's Model Y sold over 215,000 units. And we have a lot of countries that don't even have their numbers out yet. And we don't get that before a couple of months into 2024, but already 250,000 units sold. And number two on the best-selling EVs list in Europe is the Tesla Model 3. With 
more than 80,000 units. And then comes all the rest. And in terms of the best-selling EV brand in Europe, there is no doubt here either. Tesla has sold 320,000 units and the runner-up is the Volkswagen brand with 178,000 units. And I did show last week that Tesla had actually been able to grow in the BEV market share even with all the competition that was coming. But even just from last week to this week, they have grown from 17.7% BEV market share to 17.8% BEV market share. And remember, last year they had 14.7% BEV market share with only just above 222,000 units sold. So Tesla will probably end the year off with something like 57% growth here in Europe. Very impressive growth from Tesla. For BYD, we have to go quite a bit down the list to find them with only 13,601 units sold in Europe. So they might be the king in China, but in Europe they are still 23 times smaller than Tesla. And even if we compare the Tesla brand to the other automotive groups, Tesla is still the second best-selling group and even without being a group. Volkswagen is the best-selling group beating Tesla with about 65,000 units sold. But other than Volkswagen, Tesla beats any other group. Even the Stellantis group here in Europe has sold less units than the Tesla brand. Yeah, Tesla is doing quite all right here in Europe, despite all the haters claiming that Tesla was doomed in Europe. The EPA has released its 2023 Automotive Trends Report, but because Tesla is EV only, they have so much better numbers than every legacy automakers that EPA has done what James Defanson calls chart crimes. Because you can see on EPA's fleet average fuel economy, Tesla got its own little box on top of everyone else. But the matrix are not the same, so it looks like Tesla is not that far in front, but Tesla's little box goes up way above 120, where the box with every other manufacturer only goes up to 32. So James did correct this, so we can actually see how these charts are supposed to look. And firstly, we can see that when it comes to improving Improvement to the fleet average fuel economy. Well, Tesla has actually improved their fuel economy quite a lot over the last five years. Actually improved with more miles per gallon equivalent than everyone else combined. And yes, about half of the legacy automakers are actually getting worse, making less fuel efficient vehicles today than they did five years ago. And when we look at the fleet average CO2 emission, well, Tesla does not have a tailpipe emission, so they are of course at zero, and we can see that most polluting vehicles come from Stellantis, GM, Ford, and Mercedes. But I can already hear people screaming about Tesla has not zero emission because the energy is not 100% renewable. Well, some might be, if they have solar at the home, so yes, they could be, but even if we say an EV drives 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour and the grid produces 36 grams CO2 per kilowatt hour, as we can see the grid in the UK does, well, that would mean an EV running on the grid would only have an emission of 10 grams of CO2 per mile. And as you can see, GM and Stellantis is over 400 grams per mile. So on the grid in the UK as it is today, Stellantis cars emit about 40 times more CO2 emission than your EV. Or is about 30 times better than the best performing legacy automakers with their average fleet. So you have probably heard this many times if you are driving an EV that the EVs are not green because they just drive on coal. Well, people really need to start doing some research before they come up with stupid claims like this. In the US, you use a lot more coal than many places here in Europe, but we can see that the electricity generated by coal is 19.7%. Percentage generated by the renewables is 21.3%. So even in the US, when you're charging your car on the grid, you drive more on renewables than on coal. And this only gets better and better every single year. Whereas your ice cars does not get better, it still runs by burning fossil fuel 100%. And if you take nuclear into the mix, that does not have any emission as well, we are looking at about 40% of all energy in the US is generated with zero emission. But your EV runs on coal. 
No, your brain doesn't seem to run at all. <laughs> and that was in the US, in the UK, where energy generation looks like this shared by Cream Cobb on X. 67% comes from renewables, zero from coal, 8.2% from gas, 15.6% from nuclear, 2% biomass, 6% imported, 1.2% storage. And as Cobb wrote, I am still told my car runs on coal. <laughs> the stupidity is just amazing. The amount of disinformation out there is staggering. And in countries like Australia, where there is summer right now and is a very sunny place, Pablo shared that on the 25th of December, they had 119% renewable in their grid. They were producing more green energy than what they could use themselves. So the narrative about EVs driving on cold and therefore is just as bad as ice cars is just stupid. And even though we hear legacy automakers talk like they are pretty much already all electric, as there is no plan B and all that stuff, well, we can see that the best had 8% plug-in vehicles in 2022. And the leader in the EV race, GM, the lead, and it mattered, well, they had a whopping 2% plug-in vehicles. These numbers are, of course, 2022 numbers, as we don't yet have the 2023 numbers, but I don't think GM will have a higher number in 2023, which is kind of embarrassing. And Gordon Johnson is out hating hard on Tesla again with no facts other than his own emotions. Here is a headline with all Gordon Johnson's hating on Tesla. So firstly, Tesla is unreliable. Well, I just reported last week that Tesla is one of the car companies in the US with the least amount of recalls. And out of all the recalls they do have, 99% of them are fixed with an over-the-air update. So not real recalls. And a couple of years ago, in China, there was a study that showed that Tesla was the least complained about car company in all of China, the biggest car market on the planet. And I have personally been driving a Tesla for 170,000 miles and another one 40,000 miles, and I have never had any issue or been stranded. They just work. So completely BS from Johnson without having any facts backing up his thesis. But remember, his beloved GM and their Blazer EV has had a disaster of a start with the reviews that has come out from Edmunds and Inside EV. Edmunds summed it up like this. Our Chevy Blazer EV has 23 problems after only two months. And Inside EV wrote, the 2024 Chevrolet Blazer EV left me stranded in rural Virginia. Yeah, it's really not Tesla that is unreliable, but the legacy automaker's EVs and the charging network is. And then he says unsafe. Now that is just stupidity squared. As we all know, Tesla has the safest cars in the world ever tested by Nissan and European Cap. And the Model S even broke the scoring system in the European Cap when it first came out because we have never had a car that was this safe. And when it comes to safety assist features, Tesla is in a league of their own. As European Cap has shown us, no one scores higher as Tesla. So that is not me or Gordon's opinion on things, that is just the facts, Gordon. Eurobancap has Tesla's cars as the safest ever tested. And then Gordon says consumers are leaving Tesla. I mean, on what fact is he drawing this conclusion? Tesla has the best-selling car in the world. In my country, they have completely taken over. So I would say it's the other way around, that more and more people are choosing a Tesla. And Tesla will grow something like 40% this year. How are people moving away? And as I just mentioned earlier, even even reporters on CNBC are starting to get it. People want Teslas, not just any EV. So this is the exact opposite of what we're seeing playing out right now. I mean, the amount of BS coming out of Gordon is just stunning. That he still get airtime on CNBC is amazing. Just look at his tip rank score here. He is one of the absolute bottom ranked analysts on tip rank. Look, the success rate is 51%. A toying course would be just as accurate as Gordon Johnson. Yes, he is really getting desperate. He did predict that Tesla would go bankrupt, but that didn't happen. And for the last many years, he has been saying that this year, that Tesla would have a disaster of a year. And every year, Tesla makes a new record. And he has been saying that there was no demand for Tesla in China and Europe. But Tesla still has the best-selling model in both places with the Model Y. And he said in December 2022 that Tesla had built too many cars that they could not sell as they had produced more than they delivered. 
But in 2022, they sold 1.3 million units, and here in 2023, they will sell about 1.8 million. So Tesla grew with about 500,000 units in one year. But because Tesla in Q4 of 2022 produced 35,000 units more than they sold, you know, there is a transit, but that meant that Tesla had produced too many cars they could not sell. And then they sell 500,000 more units the next year. That really makes Corden Johnson's comments look extremely stupid. But he was already in 2021 talking about how Tesla had trouble in China and was on the downtrend. And here we are, and Tesla has the best-selling vehicle in the world and has double the unit sales in 2023 compared to 2021. I mean, this guy could not be more wrong about Tesla through the years even if he tried. So for CNBC to ask him about Tesla really gives CNBC a bad reputation. But as always, Gordon is just hating hard on Tesla, trying to make them look bad without having any facts to back up his thesis. But what a year it has been for Tesla. Looking back through the year, we have really got some very cool things and we have even more to look forward to in 2024. In March, we got Tesla's Investor Day, where they showed off so much cool stuff about their company. Also showed off their next generation production method called the Unboxed Method, where Tesla will reinvent how we build a car once again. Everyone is copying Tesla's production method now of today, but Tesla will leapfrog them all with their new production method. This was also the year that we got Elon showing off the version 12 of their full self-driving beta software. That is running 100% on neural network. No programming needed, but only end-to-end -end neural network. This is basically Tesla solving full self-driving in my opinion. Now it's only a question of when will they have got it through enough data so it drives better than we do. So that was a very big deal and they have sent the version 12.1 out to 15,000 employees for extra testing before wide release in the beginning of next year. So very exciting. And it was also the year Pepsi tested out the Tesla semi-truck and showed the world that it could actually do what Tesla said it could. And then we of course also got te the Cybertruck delivery event. Another product haters said was not a real, just vaporware. But now it is here and Tesla shocked the whole car industry, not by delivering on the promised Cybertruck, but delivering a car that was engineered from the ground up on a completely new 40 volt architecture, steer by wire, 1 gigabit Ethernet, and making the truck the toughest truck the world has ever seen, and the fastest. But it was also the year that we got the Tesla Model 3 Highland. The refreshed Model 3 we have been talking so much about came out and reviewers were very impressed with the cam. It kept all the things we loved about the Model 3, but improved all the things people had been complaining about, and put in so much more for practically the same price. A very impressive car all around. And of course, out of the blue, Tesla showed off the next generation, the Gen 2 of the Tesla robot. Optimus, and my mind was completely blown with just how far Tesla had got with the robot in less than two years from nothing. So freaking impressive. And that was just three months after they showed off the Gen 1 and what it has learned. And an AI scientist from Nvidia said that Tesla has created something that would be far superior. And then they come out three months later with the new Optimus Gen 2. So I can't wait to see what this thing will be able to do in 2024. And of course, this was also the year where Tesla once again, despite high interest rate and a shaky economy, came through with their goal of 1.8 million units sold. And remember, Tesla said after they delivered 500,000 units in 2020 that they would do a 50% compound annual growth rate over the next many years. So if we do a 50% and compound annual growth rate from 500,000 units, that means that 2023 should be at least 1.687 units. So Tesla is actually over 100,000 units ahead of their target from the beginning of 2021. So no matter what the haters are saying, everything is still on track and Tesla is just maneuvering the global economy and the market situation very, very well. And it will probably be the year the Model Y becomes the world's best-selling car. That will be the first time ever that an electric car becomes the best-selling car in the world. And it will also become the best-selling car in Europe and is also the first time for an EV. But even more impressive is that there will be the first time in history that a non-European automaker 
takes that title. So this is something not even Ford, GM or Toyota has ever been able to do. Just amazing work from Tesla, breaking all kinds of records globally with their Model Y. And we can, of course, not forget that this was also the year Tesla turned on the Dodo computer, one of the world's most powerful computers designed specifically to train AI on video data, which will give Tesla a huge advantage for training their full self-driving software. And, of course, it was the year that Ford announced it would be joining Tesla's charging network in May, and after that announcement, everyone else joined in, only waiting for Stellantis as the last automaker. But Tesla's next really did become the North American charging system in 2023. And it was also the year that the German OEMs got a shock at the Shanghai Auto Show and found out that they have fallen even behind the Chinese in producing EVs. As Audi CEO Deutschmann said, the German auto industry has underestimated the strength of the Chinese competitors. We are seeing a technology battle in China like the which I have never seen before. And this was also the year that Ford, GM and Volkswagen pulled back on all the EV claims and predictions and have come out and said that they are not seeing as big as a demand for their EVs as they thought, while Tesla's Model Y becomes the best-selling car in the world. So yes, this has really been a year where Tesla rose to the challenge while the legacy automakers are starting to fall apart. Ford even cut their F-150 Lightning production by half for 2024. So we should enter a very interesting year where it will probably be even more clear for the everyday man that does not follow all of this so closely that the legacy automakers is not keeping up but falling apart and Tesla will ramp up even more. Maybe to something like... 2.2 million next year? Or what do you think? Let me know your guess in the comments down below. How many units will Tesla sell in 2024? I think Tesla will deliver something like 487,000 units here in Q4 and about 2.2 million in 2024. But yet another year where the competition didn't come for Tesla. Quite the opposite. Back down and cut jobs and production of EVs. So let's see if the competition is coming for Tesla in 2024. We have been waiting for a very, very long time for that competition from the legacy automaker. But even here in 2023, it has never arrived. And let's squeeze in the last short news topics into this new show. Yes, it's time for the Tesla Shorts. Two employees have revealed the numbers of the new Cybertruck orders the company has received per day since the delivery event. Matthew Duncan Ryan, who has a great track record, said that he heard a rumor about 10,000 Cybertruck orders per day since the delivery event. But Elon's World on X said that he thought it would more than 10,000 per week, as he has been trying to track this for years and said Tesla should have received 43,000 units in the four weeks since the event. So Tesla already has two 2.1 million pre-orders for this beast and now the new orders are stacking up. How will Tesla handle this much demand for a product? Remember in Q3 of 2021, Tesla hit 2 million EVs sold cumulatively through the last decade. So now they have to produce 2 million Cybertruck as fast as possible. Just insane demand for this product all without a single ad for the Cybertruck. This is going to be one of the greatest success stories in history that so many people thought was not a real truck. And we got some good example of why it is not only about battery energy density getting better and better to get more things running on electricity. Making things five times more efficient is definitely going to help as well. Like the flying electric ferry, Candela is now about to enter commercial service in Stockholm in 2024. By using computer-controlled hydrofoils to lift their boat out of the water and make them fly, Candela can reduce energy consumption by more than 80%. This means that the boat can cover the same distance with only one-fifth of the battery or travel five times as far as many larger and more powerful electric boats with the same battery. The P-12 has a range of 100 kilometers with its 252 kilowatt hours of batteries. This is enough to cover most coastal transport, but even more important for commercial ferries is that it can be charged via DC fast charging. Nice. And we have some rumors about the 2024 Model Y Juniper coming soon in China. Giga Shanghai will suspend current production during New Year's for upgrades to the lines with more upgrades coming early in 2024. 
people familiar with the matter said that the Giga Shanghai factory is already preparing to produce the 2024 refreshed Model Y. Mass production on the new Model Y is expected to start by mid-2024. But all still just rumors and Tesla China has of course been denying all of this. But if this is the case, this will be huge for Tesla in 2024 as Tesla's Model Y is the best-selling car in the world and they are about to make it even better than it already is. So that would be awesome and Tesla will of course start with China where there are so much competition. And we are seeing a lot of cool wraps for the Cybertruck in a lot of cool colors from matte black to metallic green. And Brian writes on X, the possibilities are endless on a canvas as blank as this one. Yeah, we are going to see a lot of cool looking Cybertruck out there making every other pickup truck look old and outdated. And Mercedes is about to make a revolution. Mercedes is developing a frunk for the future electric car. What? That is crazy. The innovation at Mercedes is mind-boggling. We can probably expect to see Mercedes with a frunk in yeah, three to four years time. <laughs> but we did see some bad publicity for Mercedes EVs as one caught fire while charging at a Mercedes dealership. This is probably not the kind of advertising you want at a dealership shilling your EVs. And I reported last week that Toyota's Daihatsu had cheated in a safety test of its vehicle and it seemed to be worse than thought. And now we learn that Toyota's owned automaker halts Japanese production after admitting it tempered with safety test for 30 years. 30 years! Daihatsu has stopped output of all four of its Japanese factories as of Tuesday, including one at its headquarters in Osaka. Amazing all the lies the old legacy automaker have been doing for decades. Cheating with emission software and safety test. Could they become any more unethical? Hard to see how. And nice to see Tesla finally start to fight back against all the misinformation that the so-called journalists are writing about Tesla. As we can see, Tesla wrote a long piece on X dedunking all the wrong information in this article from Reuters. And China's biggest smartphone maker, Xiaomi, has unveiled their first ever EV, an EV called the Xiaomi SU7. They said they are aiming to become one of the world's top five automakers. <laughs> Wow, remember, prototypes are easy, production is hard, but the car itself looks very nice, looks like a copy of the Porsche Taycan, and every technology in the car is a copy of Tesla's production method, like structural battery pack, eager casting technology, carbon sleeve motors like Tesla's Plaid motors, and even the autopilot visualization looks like a copy of Tesla's full self-driving beta software. But it does have a big bump on the front head as it uses LiDAR for their system. But the car does have a huge battery of 150 kilowatt hours so twice the size of a Tesla Model 3 so I don't expect this car to be cheap as that sounds very expensive so hard to see this being a high volume car and therefore geek casting might not be making a lot of sense but only make the production even more expensive so this will be a tough sell in China with all the competition that is already out there it will no doubt be a very expensive for the customers to buy and for Xiaomi to build and now we see some of all the Wall Street analysts starting to take the Tesla Optimus robot into their valuation model. As we saw this week, Morgan Stanley Research believed Tesla's Optimus could disrupt 30% of the global labor market, a $30 trillion opportunity. Yeah, the Tesla bot will be the biggest value creator for Tesla Ever. And Gailey from Hyperchange made a video about Megrathia that is making magnesium from seawater using electricity from renewables. Now that would be a game changer if they can get that to work at scale. Nice. And we got another great example of how mistreated Tesla is in the mainstream media. Remember all the headlines about Tesla's 2 million recalls? That was not a recall, but just an over-the-air update. But this week, we see green car reports make this headline about Audi and Porsche that actually have to make some recalls. But in the headline, they just write, to add an extra layer of safety, Audi and Porsche are replacing existing cables with ones that have temperature sensors to detect overheating. <laughs> this is a safety recall by Nizza. 
that cannot be fixed with an over-the-air update. This is a recall of their charging cables that can melt and catch fire. This is actually a recall and this is just so misleading that Green Car Reports even got community noted on X by writing such misleading headlines. Nice to see the community note are actually working. But the bias against Tesla on the news outlet is just amazing. And we saw a nice demonstration of what many of the EV haters just don't seem to get. The most convenient car is an EV, not a nice car. So we're here and my sister Melinda is going to show us how challenging and how difficult it is to charge my Tesla at home. So Melinda, explain to us what we're doing here. We're getting ready to push this button. Open the door. Simply take this. And oh. you're done. Was that hard? Not at all. Pretty simple, right? Yes, a lot cleaner. And it's going to be charging while we're home doing nothing, right? Right, right. How many times have we had to stop by the gas station the whole two weeks you've been here? None. Nice, huh? Nice. <laughs> Yes, I used to go to the gas station two times a week to fill up my old ice car and that took at least five minutes every time to get off route to go to the charging station, fill it up and get back to the route. So at least five minutes. So that was 10 minutes a week. So that is eight and a half hours spent on going to the gas station every year that I no longer do. As 80% of all my charging in all the history of my owning an EV is done while I sleep in my bed. Even with all the road trips we have been doing, 80% of our charging is done while sleeping. So I save about eight and a half hours every year by not having to go to the gas station two times a week. So yes, I am saving time having an EV compared to an ice car. It is the EV that is the convenient one. It is not the other way around as many ill-informed ice owners think it is. And Tesla Economics shared a picture on X and wrote a $25,000 Tesla compact vehicle will put a nail in the coffin for legacy automakers. Indeed, just as I made a video about this week, how this car will put an end to the ice industry. But they showed this cool design they have made of the car and Elon replied, good design. And Autocar made a comparison between the Tesla Model S Plaid and the BMW i5 and the Mercedes EQE. And even though they wrote in their review of the EQE, crammed interior, slowest charging, worst efficiency, most expensive and no frunk. But according to some random matrix, apparently it was the best of the three. But AJ put the Tesla up against the EQE just so people can see the different matrix side by side. And the only thing the EQE wins over the Plaid Model S is cargo volume and only by 2%. Every other matrix, the EQE falls short like range, charging speed, 0 to 60, top speed, efficiency, and not even to mention software and no frunk. But according to Autocar, the EQE EQS is the best car. <laughs> and even after two and a half months of strike and protest against Tesla in Sweden, because they don't want to join the union, Tesla's Model Y still becomes the best selling car in Sweden in 2023. Yeah, you can't stop innovation with your little unions. I guess the best revenge is success. And before we end off with a bit of fun, I just want to make a quick shout out to my new supporters of this channel. My new YouTube member, Skylark Torch, and my new Patreon producer, Norton Slovak, Elon Klopp, and William A. Bernick. Thank you so much for all your support. I am doing this all by myself, but you guys are all the producers of this new show. Thank you. And let's end off with a bit of fun. Some people are saying Elon cannot run so many companies at once. But um, we're not all made equal. Here is a little video showing Elon and the rest of the world.
that is all we have time for in this new show hope you enjoyed it if you did don't forget to hit that like button it really does help this video out a lot and if you did like it maybe you want to consider hitting that subscribe button notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos just like this one because i have a lot more coming for you in 2024 but this is it for 2023 thank you so much for you guys watching for all my supporters and subscribers it has been an amazing year not just for tesla also for me and best in tesla and i have a suspicion that 2024 will be even better so happy new year to all of you and see you next year and until next time take care out there and be nice <laughs>